and concentration. Remember I said the dual experience that we all of us need to experience in our life? <coughs> what is sanctification? In, in, in all that I spoke now, I'm going to sum up in just two diagrams. Sanctification, of course, as we know, Is God interven intervention towards man? That's sanctification. God's intervention to man is sanctification. And you see what happens inside as I show you. It's <coughs> God over here. Because he loved John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave us only without his son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God's love for us, he finds his love for us. He sent on Jesus Christ, which is a grace. And that produces salvation. To who? You understand? God loved us. He wanted us fellowship with us. It's a non grace. Salvation was born to man. That's sanctification. Only God could have done it. Nobody could. We can't save ourselves. We can't sanctify ourselves. God, because He loved us, He chose to love us. He wanted our fellowship with us. By the grace of God, Jesus come. And through Jesus, we are saved. Sanctification. And we come to the next over. What is this? I said, from here, you need to move here. What is this now? Yes, we are sanctified. We are here, we are sanctified, very happy, rejoicing, giving testimonies, giving stories, preaching all about the same one whole all your life. Talk about this all the time. Talk about the love, talk about the grace, talk about salvation, talk about how you're being blessed as a man. Go home, and home, and home, and home. This is sanctification. But what we, what, what we forget to understand is, <coughs> what is this? Let me use the red. Sec this one is, same, we have God here, we have man here. Now here this man, who is redeemed, Meaning, who is as received the redemption of God, meaning a sanctified man. <coughs> you understand? He's been sanctified now. What is consecration? He's sanctified. In redemption, he moves upward. How? By love. What makes you do things, brother and sister? What makes you to keep away from all sort of sinful things? Because you love God. The love. Jesus told Paul, do you uh, to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me three times in the end of the Gospel of John, in chapter 21? Because you're redeemed, you love God, what is done for you, obviously, because of that. And when you keep loving God, hear me, what happens? There's an intimacy that happens. Man, a redeemed man, he loves God for what he's done. He starts becoming intimate with him because of the love. He wants to talk to him, he wants to hear, he wants, him, he wants God to talk to him back. He wants to talk and hear, he wants to hear and talk. He wants to worship, he wants to be one with God because of his redemption nature. He starts loving God, starts loving God, starts loving God. Intimacy grows. And because of intimacy, Still doesn't stop there. He moves on to accountability. What is that? Let me write it down and explain to you. Accountability. What is that? <coughs> accountability is, is nothing. It's simply not. It's nothing but 
because you you love the Lord so much, because you're intimate with Him, you you feel how accountable. Nobody forces you. Nobody tells you, "Don't do that. Don't do this today." That's the biggest problem in church. What should I do, brother? What should I, do, brother? Why? Well, in fact, not even that. They don't stop there. They ask you, "Where it shows me in the Word that you should not do things?" But when you are growing with love and intimacy, yes, you love weaknesses. Yes, in fact, this stage you love a lot of weaknesses. According to my experience, you fall to them tremors on your face. But nevertheless, you know your weaknesses. You know that you have sinned. You know that you have fallen. You know that you hurt the Christ. You know that you hurt Him. You know that the heart of God is weeping because you are moving to accountability. Nobody tells you anything. Any song, Christian song will 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 talk to you. Any message will talk to you. You don't search for messages. If a, a brother and sisters in Christ talks to you, it straight will convict you because they're moving to accountability. You don't look for messages; messages will come to you because accountability. <coughs> and, from, and you, as you keep moving accountability, there's a minute again the stage you'll not fall. You'll have temptations and weaknesses, but you're still accountable. You start saying, "Lord, I don't want to do this, but I have weakness. Lord, help me." As Paul said, three times he prayed, he, he prayed to God for his weaknesses, <coughs> and God says, "My strength is sufficient for thee." My strength is made. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weaknesses. Paul, move up, move up, move up. What's the next one? When you move up, you start moving up. You start doing God's will. You start doing God's will. You start becoming the will of God. You start becoming wherever you go. You find God's will through you. It's accomplished. You please the Father. The last one, you please the Father, because you you understand your redemption. Out of love, you you are growing so much out of love. You start becoming accountable for your actions, for your thoughts, for everything. Nobody has to tell you anything. You start growing in muchness. You start doing the will of God. You start becoming the will of God, and ultimately you start pleasing God. That's because you are in this hallway. This is consecration. This is what is this? I kept this for the last. What is this? See, I haven't wrote the other side. Left it there. This is nothing but man's response. Man's response towards God. <coughs> Your God's inter in intervention towards man. This is man's response towards God. We move from this hovel to this hovel. Now I can assure you, many of us love to be in this hovel. But God is what expects you to move this hovel. This in this hovel you find the apostles, the Old Testament saints, the New Testament saints. You find the contemporary men of God that you and me know. They all function from this level. That's why through them things happen. Through them revival broke. Through them will of God was accomplished. Sovereign will of God was done without even their knowing because they were just consecrating their life always to God. Joseph was taken and used. By God, he stood before Pharaoh. David was in the wilderness, he stood before King Saul. The New Testament, Saul became Paul, Timothy, Silas. Even if you take the in the contemporary men of God, <coughs> Charles Finney, and all the great men of God we have, they all move because they are not perfect either. They all were move from this whole world to this whole world. They understood what is to be. Sanctified. Yes, they understand this one, but they also know what is this means. They move from this into this. And as you move up, consecration becomes easy. You still have temptations, though, but you move this level. That's what means. Choose to consecrate what he has sanctified. Yes, he has sanctified, but you have a choice to choose to consecrate. Either say. 
I will live, live in this one, or you say, I'm willing to associate with the sacred and refuse the profane and move towards consecration. That's a contrition life. That's what I'm, I'm bringing, I brought to you this, this moment. All those who are watching with me, this is what it is. Choose to consecrate what you yes, and, and you'll see tremendous stuff in your life. As Joshua said, consecrate your life. And you see wonders. For tomorrow, you'll see wonders that God will do through you. God bless you and thank you for watching once again. Until we meet next time, see you and God bless you.